It feels like I'm about to tell a plane to like clear for landing. These things yeah. are huge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think this is a question a lot of people have, but no one wants to be that person that asks it. Uh, and that is, as a chancellor of a university, what is your role and what is it that you do? Because I believe there's a distinction between the two, right? Yeah. The way I like to describe the chancellor role is a combination of principal, like school principal, mm -hmm. uh, mayor of a small town, and CEO. And okay. my job really has aspects of all of those things. It's a governance job where I make policy and make decisions and strategize. I'm also the spokesperson for the university. Uh, I go out and raise resources, money for the university. Mm -hmm. um, I ha interact uh, with the uh, many external constituencies like uh, the legislature, uh, the regents, um, various others, uh, industry, uh, foundations, government entities. So it's really a, an externally focused job that has the ultimate responsibility for decision making on the campus. And then I remember you saying that as chancellor, like part of your role is to be the chief cheerleader. Have yeah. you found over these past four years that you've been that cheerleader? I try to be. You know, yeah. I like to go to athletic events and, and yeah. cheer for the uh, Aggies on the fields and the courts. Uh, I like to post very positive messages on social media about good things that have happened, awards people have won, or other things that have happened on campus. And I try to stay positive all the time about what's happening here at UC Davis. Gotcha, gotcha. And it's always staying positive to the campus because that's like you want to have that as an example. Do you ever have like a bad day or you don't feel good? Uh, how do you continue with that day? Because you can't show it too much on social media, but it's probably through your support system. Yeah, you know, everybody has bad days and I'm no different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My support system is first and foremost uh, my wife, uh, Lachelle. So she gets to hear a lot of my uh, venting about what's <laughs> happening here on yeah. campus. And uh, she listens and, and she's quite supportive. But then the team is also very good here, the leadership team. Uh, yeah. we, we compare notes and we strategize and we share uh, positive and negative aspects of, of our leadership roles all the time. Yeah, gotcha. I know you've acknowledged the nickname that Aggies have given you, Papa May. <laughs> so essentially, as the father figure of UC Davis, this is probably an easy question, but in your eyes, what makes UC Davis a unique university? You know, I think one of the things I learned when I came, uh, you know, so I was very much aware of the overall excellence of the university, mm -hmm. and specifically the, the excellence in ag and in veterinary medicine and things like that. But what I didn't know, and I think is really important, is the excellence that's really across the board uh, in the academics and research here at the university. We have the most comprehensive university in the UC system. We say that all the time because we have more than 100 undergraduate degree programs. I think 104, I think, is the right number, mm -hmm. and, and more than 90 graduate and professional programs. So there's a lot of uh, rich uh, uh, areas of study and, and a lot of expertise and um, I know that every university thinks they are the most comprehensive and best uh, excellent place for people to learn. But uh, I really think there's some substance to that here at UC Davis. Gotcha. And then I know a few years back, right before you became chancellor, um, some of your friends on the other side of the nation, they were saying, UC Davis, is that in L.A.? Like, where is that? <laughs> Have you kind of done a job to put that on the map more for them? Like, do they get it now? I I've been working at that. It's still an unfinished uh, Biz, uh, product, unfinished business. The funny story is one of my friends from high school was going to come visit me, and he said, I'm going to be in L.A., so I'm going to just come visit you on the weekend. I said, you know, that's about a 400-mile <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. drive for your visit. He said, oh, well, uh, my geography is not that good. And <laughs> he, he was kind of a microcosm of many folks, I think, uh, uh, out east. Um, one of my early interviews was at a, uh, uh, a media uh, uh, entity in Washington, D.C. The reporter actually asked me, where is Davis <laughs> in that interview? And, and that just gave, gives you an idea of yeah. how much work we had to do to get people to know where we are and what we do. And I think we're making a lot of progress now. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of that has subsided and, and a lot of good things are happening here that we can promote that people are taking notice of. Yeah, I agree. I think it's been doing well. Now, what is a common complaint you've heard about UC Davis? And what has the university as a whole done to address it? Again, when I came, there were lots of concerns around basic needs for students, principally housing, uh, food insecurity, and mental health. Uh, and we kind of took those uh, uh, issues head on. Uh, formed the Basic Needs Center, the Aggie Compass. We built lots of housing. In fact, this fall we're opening up 3,300 new beds in West Village and another 1,000 in Shasta Hall. So I think uh, we're almost at the point where, we, where the housing issue is, has not gone away but substantially subsided in terms of uh, concern. Another complaint uh, 
you know, was there was a lot of mistrust in the administration when I came. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to think that we've uh, turned that corner as well. We have programs like this. You know, we have lots of mm-hmm. outreach and I uh, have student advisory committees and boards and, uh, um, and, and lots of opportunities to interact with students so they can kind of see uh, what's going on here uh, in campus leadership. And I go out of my way to be accessible and approachable and, and, and let students build that trust. And you've talked about how your greatest achievement is broadening and expanding the participation of underrepresented groups. And that's kind of what you touched on here. Was that still one of your greatest achievements? Well, certainly one of the things I'm most proud of in my career. You know, I would say probably my greatest achievements are my kids. But <laughs> I think uh, professionally, um, I'm very proud that uh, I've at least been a contributor to broadening participation in STEM fields in particular by underrepresented minority groups. So, uh, and I've gotten some recognition for that. And and I think we're also doing a good job of that at UC Davis and not just in STEM, but in in, in broader academic uh, uh, fields. As chancellor of UC Davis for the past four years, you've been able to experience UC Davis firsthand and even secondhand through students and the community. So what would you say is the most underrated aspect of the UC Davis experience? I think the aspect that I like the most is you have the college town, small town atmosphere, Mm -hmm. uh, but you have access to every other lifestyle you can imagine from, you know, big cities like Sacramento on one side, San Francisco on the other side, and Oakland. And you have Napa, you have Tahoe, you have Yosemite, you have all these different lifestyle choices that you can make that are within easy access of UC Davis after you finish studying. Yeah. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Studies first. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you must have known my mom was listening because that's I've heard that line before. Yeah. Hey, my mom is probably listening too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have like a favorite spot to get out to? Of course, when your studies are done, is there any place you like to frequent? All the places I named, we we do we do frequent. I guess we're probably in Napa quite a bit because uh, gotcha. my wife and I both enjoy uh, the the. the the scenery and as well as the wine so well I mean you came to the right university if you love wine yeah yeah (laughs) well I've grown to love wine since I've been here I really wasn't uh I I, I drank wine but I wasn't as much of a fan as I am now uh, four years ago Mm -hmm. gotcha usually when people find out how the sausage is made they get turned off but you find out how the wine was made and you're like this is great yeah and well you're the number one (laughs) viticulture and enology program in the world you have to have an appreciation for how it's made and how it tastes (laughs) yes would you consider yourself a patron of the art? Uh, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm still learning. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. uh, it's fun. Learning is fun. <laughs> yes, totally. So for a prospective college student faced with the choices of colleges to get an engineering degree from, why should someone pick Davis over another school? I know your alma mater has a reputation of turning out more engineers than any institution, but Davis's engineering program has to have something going for it, right? Davis is a high-quality engineering program. In fact, uh, the latest rankings just came out, and and I think we're moved up to 27th overall, which is in the top 10% of all engineering programs in the country. So a lot to be proud of there with high-quality programs in ag engineering, mechanical and aerospace, electrical, biomedical, chemical. All those disciplines are very strong here. So I think uh, if you choose engineering at UC Davis, you will not be sorry. Yeah, totally. I know I haven't been sorry. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I got another year, though. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. So asking for a friend and completely unrelated to the fact that I graduate this year, what is your advice for a post-grad Aggie about to enter the workforce? You know, I guess I would say be confident in what you learned here and what, you're, uh, what you've what you been trained to do. You're going to be uh, in a very good position to be very competitive in whatever profession you choose or whatever work environment you're in. Mm-hmm. So I would say that'd be my biggest piece of advice is just Mm -hmm. have a lot of confidence in what you have taken from UC Davis. Yeah. And I don't know if I can speak for like every industry, but at least in the tech industry, I found there's this welcoming nature to Aggies. Like uh, in the internships I've done with engineering, anytime you talk to a UC Davis alum, they're always like, oh, it's great to see another Davis, you know, student coming in here. Um, Do you think that that's unique to Davis, that welcoming nature of the students? You know, I don't know if it's unique, but I know it certainly exists. I think you have about 250,000 living alumni all over the world. And anywhere you go, if you've got on an Aggie uh, jersey or uh, have on a hat or something that uh, identifies you as an Aggie, you'll find somebody who will say, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. And welcome you into whatever it is they're doing and, and, and have a conversation with you. So if, yeah. you, if you go somewhere to, to work and there are other Aggies there mm-hmm. uh, at your workplace, they're going to mentor you and help yeah. you be successful. Yeah, that's great. 
Yeah, I know. I see sometimes Davis reposts those things where someone's wearing like a sweatshirt and then they do a photo op with someone because they're like, oh, no yeah. way. <laughs> Look at us. Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's people in your life that know you better than anyone else, whether that's your wife and daughters, the people you work with every day, or even former president of Georgia Tech, Wayne Clough. But what is one thing you wish more people knew about you? Wow. Okay. Um, I would say I'll, I'll, I'll tell a short story to, to get mm-hmm. to my point. Um, my da- youngest daughter is a, a, a teacher. She teaches preschool. Mm-hmm. And um, my wife had a birthday last month. And uh, she told my daughter told her class, mm-hmm. it's my mom's birthday. And <laughs> the kid said, you have a mom? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess the, the point of the story is uh, I would like for people to realize uh, that I'm human, you know, I mm-hmm. have strengths and I have faults just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, I love s- superheroes, but I don't have superpowers. <laughs> so there's some things that I just, you know, I wish I could do uh, or do more quickly, but we're, we're making progress. And, and um, I, I, I just hope that people understand that uh, I have human limitations and constraints <laughs> like everyone else. <laughs> gotcha. That makes sense. But we don't have superpowers yet. Not yet. <laughs> you still have a story to tell. But if you were to happen upon a superpower, do you have a preference? I think I'd want to be telekinetic so I could move okay. things with my mind. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I know in cartoons growing up, they always see that character like trying to raise the TV remote. Would that be your main <laughs> usage or do you have like something in mind? <laughs> I'd, I'd try to do something a little more uh, uh, profound or, or, or helpful than, you know, moving my remote. Yeah. Uh, I, I'd try to do something where uh, we, we could have a positive, I could have a positive influence on what's happening uh, yeah. in the external society. Yeah. And that's in very superhero nature. You've said yeah. that your favorite part about superheroes is how they use that power for good. Exactly. So you're, living, you're living your law. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing we do with education. We try to use it for good. That's true. Oh, yeah. You can learn stuff and then yeah. it's what you do with it. Yeah. Right. Now, As you can probably guess, COVID is on the minds of students and families as they return to campus. And the university has been sending out great updates about what it's doing to prepare the campus, but there's still a lot of anxiety. As a parent yourself, what can you say to ease this anxiety that so many people are feeling? Well, first I'd say anxiety and uncertainty is is natural, so don't feel bad about feeling that way. Uh, We've had a year and a half of of really difficult times, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be inviting students back to UC Davis for in-person learning if I didn't trust what we were doing enough to bring my own daughters back here if if they were students here. So uh, I'm feeling very confident in our vaccination mandate. We have about 95% of our students vaccinated currently today, and I think that number will still climb a little bit before classes start. We are maintaining the the mask mandate indoors. Uh, We have uh, testing regimes that's really second to none. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we can be confident that we're going to be as safe and healthy as we possibly can be uh, until the pandemic has dissipated. Gotcha. Awesome. I know, like I said, my mom's listening, so she's going to be happy to hear that. There's about like six people that watch my videos, and I just found out last week she's one of them. So that's great. Yeah. And now Davis, they're known as the bike campus of the world. Yeah. I don't know if that's globally recognized, but we say it. And have you, do you ride a bike frequently? I have a bike. I don't ride frequently. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I'm usually in a suit or I'm usually between Davis and Sacramento. So riding a bike is not uh, as, as conducive as it might be to, to, yeah. to the job here. But I do try to ride when I can. Gotcha. Gotcha. Have you ever been the victim of an accident? Not since I've been in Davis, but I've okay. seen plenty of accidents. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. I see it sometimes. Yeah. Oh, man. I just think my lucky stars. That's not me. And like I said, yet we have another year. We'll see. Yeah. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about this, but Boba, do you have an opinion on Boba? <laughs> we had a Boba episode on Thursday Thoughts a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have a strong opinion. I'm, I, yeah. I'm not a Boba drinker. I, I'll yeah. drink it if it's available, but I don't go uh, buy it or seek it out. Uh, yeah. uh, I know it's very popular and it seems to be uh, something students really like, so I'm um, yeah. all for it. Yeah. Do you know how many shops we have? How many Boba shops? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> we have 16. In Davis? Yeah, in Davis. Oh, that's incredible. I would not yeah. have guessed that many. I, I know the one at 3rd and A. I see that one with the gotcha, line gotcha. all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're popular. Uh-huh. I have to admit, though, I'm kind of a boba noob myself. Like, I don't know much. I get these same two flavors, you know, like taro and Thai. Okay. But that's really it. It's just because I looked at the tea section, you know. <laughs> but have you tried this place called Sweet and Shavery? 
I have not, but my you wife and kids love sweet and savory. <laughs> oh my God. That warms my heart in an ironic way because it's cold. It's my favorite place. I always talk about it's like the hidden gem in Davis. Well, I'll have to check my schedule if I'm free, but I would love to take you sometime. I highly recommend it. They have that sounds so much, great. Yeah. Oh my God. It's the best. I would love that. You might catch me at the Davis Creamery from time to time. Oh yeah. Love to get a shake. Uh, and, uh, uh, since only six people watch your show, I'm going to announce that whenever I'm there and students are in there with me, I usually buy them an ice cream. That's good. I'll, I'll let those people know. Yeah. <laughs> or you just did. Yeah. Now, do you have a go-to flavor? They have some, like, really wacky flavors there. They do. They have a really eclectic uh, mix. I try something different every time. Okay. That's smart. My, yeah. yeah. I just, like, happened upon the genius of that place, like, a month ago. I didn't know their shakes were so good. Perfect consistency, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Now, if someone was visiting UC Davis... What's one thing that they absolutely have to try from the dining commons? Well, we like Latitude that just opened last year. And yeah. the fact that they have kind of a global cuisine is, is attractive. I don't know if there's any one thing I could point to, but yeah. like, we like the uh, when, when they have Italian, that's good. Uh, I, think, I think they have Hawaiian now, which I want to oh. try. Yeah. But there's always something different there at Latitude. So I'd recommend they go to Latitude. Gotcha. Gotcha. You're familiar with imposter syndrome? Yeah. Do you get imposter syndrome? And I then- do. What do you do to overcome it? So um, I think, um, so I waffle back and forth between feeling like an imposter and then being overly confident. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so I, I, yeah. when, I, when I feel the uh, imposter syndrome happening, I start thinking about, well, I'm pretty good at this stuff, and I've trained yeah. myself my whole career to be in the position that I am now, and yeah. I'm, I think I'm better than the next person who might be able to do it. So, yeah. so I yeah. kind of sh- work myself out of the imposter syndrome that way. Gotcha. I know that would be good to hear. I, I know so many students uh, go through that. It's prevalent in high achieving people. So I imagine every Davis student feels it. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Not, uh, uh, not uncommon at all. So yeah. if you feel it, you're, it's normal. Just try to get past it. Work through it. Talk to people. If you need some counseling or therapy, do that. I mean, do whatever you need to get past it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to say, like, thank you to the audience. Thank you to everyone that works in the background on this. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And it especially wouldn't be possible without the man himself, Chancellor Gary May. So I want to say thank you so much for taking the time. And it was an honor and a pleasure. Happy to do it, Garv. Uh, uh, Anytime you want to have me back, I'm I'm, I'm here and available. Okay. I'll have to check my schedule. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs)